Okay, here we are. We're back. All of the 7 inch and 8 inch lures now have their stainless steel wire added. Into the 8 inch. And here's the uh, kind of hook that we're kind of looking for just to put everything in perspective. Now, one thing we haven't talked about is what is our target weight. Now, it, sh it should be obvious that if I, if I add no weight to this lure, it will float. It's a given. It's got lots of wood, a tiny little bit of stainless steel and have some hooks on it. This will definitely float. Now, this one is 143 grams. Now, I try to rate the weight on all of my lures. So when I was casting this one the other day, I thought it was really quite heavy. So I kind of thought, well, 143 grams is probably heavy for the eight inch. So I would like to make these probably 120 grams and these maybe 110 or maybe even 100 grams. So how do I do that? Okay. So we bring in our electronic scale. And we turn it on. So let's just weigh the, uh, the previous one. We're 147 grams there. Okay, a little bit of measurement error from time to time. So let's measure this guy. So that's 96 grams. So I'm going to write that on the lure. So you can see that there. Now we have to figure out what amount of lead we should add. So how, first of all, let, let's talk about how we're going to uh, put it in. So if you look, this big back area here is the likely place to put the lead. There's no reason to put it up front. You don't want that front end, nose down. Um, uh, lead in the back here. We actually had a couple choices. We When we had this lure, in two pieces. We could have dug out some wood on both sides and put it on the inside. Um, this though, being a, being a popper, is not a high-tech hook. When it's on the surface and it's being pulled, it's flopping around, so there's really no reason to have the lead inside. The easier way would be to drill a hole here and pour lead in. Now, how many holes? We don't know yet. Same thing for the seven inch uh, going towards the, uh, the thicker part. And you know, mark, mark, mark them all. The, the actual position of the, of, the, of the lid doesn't, like it doesn't have to be towards the back, but if it is the back, maybe, yeah, I might even actually move these things. If it is towards the back, you notice that if you look at this thing, it kind of looks like a bullet. So when you're when you're casting it going this way, um, if you have lead at the back, it's going to be like an arrow. It's going to want to uh, pull the line out and go in a straight line. So yeah, after after thinking about it, yeah, maybe having that lead a little bit farther back might not be a bad idea. But as far as being centered, uh, it should be centered, but it, it certainly doesn't have to be centered because uh, as that lure is being kind of jerked through the water, you kind of want it to kind of flop around. So I'm going to use um, a brad point drill and I'm going to drill a hole in each one of these knowing that they'll take at least, and of course in that hole we're going to add liquid lead and it's going to harden and then we'll cover that up and you'll never see it. 
but we'll be, we're going to be careful that while we're pouring it, we'll, we'll pour one hole, weigh it, and again, we want to make the 8 inch lures 120 grams, I'm going to write that down, 120 grams, and the smaller lures uh, 100 to 120 grams. So in this case, this is 96 grams, so we're going to have to add 24 grams of lead. In this case, we're going to have to add 18 and 20, so that's uh, 38 grams of lead. So the solution, the number of holes may differ from lure to lure because they're starting out with different weights. These guys are all right around 57 grams, so um, uh, about 43 grams of lead will bring this up to 100. And uh, 100 may be a little bit too much, but you know what? We're gonna we're gonna see. We're gonna drill some holes, pour some lead, and find out what that first hole does. So we are ready uh, to pour our first uh, lead, and uh, we're gonna put it in the in the first hole that we drilled. We don't know how much we're gonna need. Um, bear in mind when we when I drilled the hole, I bumped into that channel that we had cut. And to make sure the lead doesn't run out, I put a little piece of paper in there, and that uh, tissue paper, and that tissue paper will, will hold that lead in place. Now, you're going to see me fill that lead, and I can't have the lead too high. If the lead is too high, I can't cover it up. So you might see me kind of flicking some out. So that's what that is. So let's, let's, let's try this out. Right now, we, we've got lead coming out of this little uh, uh, lead pot. So let's uh, okay so I, I can't turn it over for you to see it but you can see it's oh it's a sixteenth of an inch maybe a thirty second inch down and in just a few seconds it hardens and now you can see it. So we'll do the other uh, eight inch So well, I'm going to uh, turn off the camera for the moment. I'm going to weigh all these guys and we're going to determine if we need more holes. For the uh, 96 gram 8 inch, I decided that I needed at least two more holes and we're going to focus on this lure and uh, see what we can do about uh, probably getting him closer to the 120 mark, maybe 110. So that's probably as much as I want to go for lead. Let's see what we got. Oh, wow. We've got 118, so that's within 3 grams, so that's perfect. So that's kind of how you do it. It's uh, not exact science, but uh, you, can, you can have a target weight and uh, zoom in on it based on the number of lead holes that you pour and uh, target the, uh, the right weight and get pretty close. I, I took the opportunity to uh, put some filler in it, and I wanted to show you the filler that I use. This is a um, LePage filler. It's a solvent-based. dries very quickly. Um, if you sand it within kind of like 25 to 30 minutes, it sands very nicely. If you wait a couple days, it's hard as a rock. So typically what I'll do is I'll leave this um, harden for oh. 30 minutes, maybe an hour, and then I'll take off the, uh, the, the lumps and the bumps. But this stuff shrinks quite a bit, so inevitably there'll have to be a second coat. Now even after the second coat, after you sand it, this filler is quite porous. So I use uh, another filler, a second filler, to fill in the pores of the first filler. And when we get to that, I'll, I'll bring it up and show you what I use. So all of the poppers I've uh, I filled in with that uh, rough filler, the LePage. Many of these have had to have uh, two layers of the filler, and even then, you can see there's dimples in the center, so they're not totally uh, covered. The uh, LePage shrinks quite a bit, but there is another layer, or even two, 
of a, uh, a finer material and that, that will cover a lot of the scratches that happen in, in, the, um, in the pages. But we don't, we don't want to do that just yet. So when I look at the lure that we're basically copying, I see a couple things that we haven't done yet. So you can tell that this is very round, like it has come off a lathe. But the sides are a little bit flat. So we've got to do that. And of course we've got to install the eyes. The eyes are going to be a little bit of work. Um, they're on an angled surface, so right off the bat you're drilling using a Forstner bit, which is flat, on an angled surface and right off the bat you know that there's going to be hmm, some challenges. So I'm going to, going to attack these two issues one at a time. So I'm going to uh, go over to the tabletop sander and I'm going to take these edges off just a little bit. And I'll show you a little clip on how I do that. Very, very simple. But because, because you get a flat spot, now you got to sand a little bit more because you don't want that, sa that flat spot to, to really, really show with hard edges. You want nice soft edges. And then we'll get to the eyes because that's, uh, that's always a nice uh, part of the, uh, of the build because the eyes um, really, really make the lure. Like when you actually put these eyes in, which is just before you put on your first coat of epoxy, your, uh, your lure goes through one of those aha moments and it, it just it's just starts to look like a lure and it starts to be almost alive. So the eyes are important and they're important to do properly. So I'm gonna do one of these uh, eight inch poppers and this is not a precision cut but you'd like it to be kind of square to the uh, to the lure. So what I do is I, I keep a, my my fingers on the uh, the loops at either end, the tail and the front, and I kind of square up the whole lure to the belt, and then I'm just going to touch down a little bit. I don't want to go up into the sides here at all. I just want to do kind of in this area here. Let's try it out and see how it goes. That's typically what you're looking for. And now, of course, I'm going to take, uh, probably start, maybe not with 80 grit, but I'll start with uh, 100 grit. Take those sharp edges off. And uh, that will kind of blend now into the, into the lure. And look very much like uh, the, the hook that I'm trying to copy. I have three more to do. I'll get back to you after I'm done. So now we have to make a socket for the eye. So I brought this lure back as an example of the easy way. So this lure has eyes that are directly opposite each other and they're relatively flat, parallel to each other. So these are really easy to make because what you do is when, you, when you've got a block of wood um, for your um, for your lure, before you do any shaping, while it's still square, you locate the um, uh, the center of the eye and you drill a little hole. And that way, that center of those eyes is, is frozen. It'll always be there, it'll always be right. And this is a, an example of, of one of the lures that I've done like that. And once I started that, I saw that on a YouTube video, I, wow, I never ever had a wonky eye again. This lure, however, is a little different. If you notice, the two are very angled. 
and they're also angled this way as well so um, it, it provides a bit more of a challenge so what what you do is you have to I use a vernier and I measure from the high point here on the lure and I measure what closest things to the center that I can find and sometimes that you got to guess a little bit and then I move that over to the lure that I'm trying to find the center for the eyes and I make a, a line you can see the line and I'll do that on this side as well and because this nose is at an angle you've got to kind of make sure that your vernier is in fact at the peak and I've, I've kind of exaggerated it now and uh, I'm a little over just just so you can see that the line is there so then what you do is you approximate the center of the lure to the edge of the eye. Now, the idea is you want to be identical, so what you do is you transpose that over here onto the lure and you make a mark. So that's, that's the edge of the eye and you do that on both sides. So now, now, now you know where the edge is. Now, these eyes, I think I said earlier in my video that they were 20 millimeter, they're actually 18 millimeter. So uh, you need to go down half of 18 millimeters, which is another nine millimeters. So you, you, uh, you locate your nine millimeters on your vernier and then that's where the center should be. And if you do that correctly on both sides, this center here is now where you're gonna do your drilling with your Forstner bit. Now, one thing that I like to do, the Forstner bit has a little, very tiny drilling guide in the center of it. So the, the Forstner bit is flat, the problem is that this is concave and, and, and you'll see in a, a little vid video how you, uh, how you kind of manually do that. But what you, what you end up with is a lure that looks like this. So this is the center and these eyes are pretty close to equal but uh, you can tell that uh, the eyes are about oh maybe a millimeter cockeyed but that you'll never see that. And you can see how flat the Forstner bit and uh, when you put an 18 millimeter eye in there it just fits beautifully. But one thing you do have, and this, this goes for the commercial lures as well, you have a fairly large edge here and it's just the way that the hook is contoured. What, what happens later on in the project is as you're putting epoxy uh, on this lure and you're, you're moving it around on a uh, a machine to rotate it. Uh, this edge right here fills up with epoxy and uh, same as this edge here and uh, this, this particular lure I dug a little bit too much here you can see that this one is quite a bit bigger I'll put the eye in there just so you can see it. So what I'm going to do I can adjust this eye a little bit by when I go to glue the eye in, I can put a little bit of that um, uh, LePage's uh, filler in here and I can slant this eye up a little bit so this isn't quite so big. So there are ways to recover from uh, mistakes and make things look right. And uh, right away here we're going to go to the drill press and show you how I drill these. Cutting the eyes is a bit of an, an awkward thing. Um, you see how this is angled. So you've got a flat surface 
going against a, an angled surface. And what you do is you, you kind of line it up as best you can. I put a little dimple where the center of the Fortner bit should go. And then you, you start the hole and then you, you kind of tilt it a little bit um, to get the back part of the hole to be at least the depth that you need to uh, countersink the eye. So let's try one and see how it goes. So this is what it looks like. This edge here is usually uh, quite a quite a deep ridge because of the angle that it's being uh, dug at. But uh, the eye will fit in there very, very nicely. I may put a little bit of filler in there when I put the eye in to bring the eye maybe just not quite so deep.